You're listening to my cousin D Lil's on. It's D Lil's you rockin' with hip hop and home runs. We don't criticize pros, man. It's all fun. Urban media, yeah, we talking sports, debating issues, spitting game on and off the court. It's hip hop and home runs. Hip hop and home runs. Dot com. Boy D Lil's back with the quick episode of HipHopMahomeRuns.com. A couple things that I wanted to clear before the, uh, you know, the Western Conference Finals kicks off tonight. I want to talk about the Clippers, and you know they've been in the news a lot this week. And I just want to talk about a couple of things, a couple of issues that I'm having with them, and uh, you know what I feel like would be the best strategy going forward for Doc Rivers would be. Um, so let's start off with all this. DeAndre Jordan, Chris Paul beef. If any of the rumors are true, DeAndre Jordan is a straight chump, and so is Blake Griffin. And I'll tell you why. Um, <clears throat> I've seen this a lot, you know, even on the streets, even on the high school and, co- and collegiate level. When you have teams and they have strong personality, star players on their team, star leaders. Okay, those star leaders have a certain raised expectation for the rest of their team, regardless of their skill level. So in the case of Chris Paul. And DeAndre Jordan's relationship, you have Chris Paul, who has high skill level, very efficient offensive player, um, very great passer, great defender, can get in there and grab and give you four or five boards a game, as well as three to four steals. That type of player that plays with that type of high efficiency is going to have the raised expectations that Blake Griffin, a 6'10", you know, muscular warrior, should be able to put in you know, 30 points per game in the playoffs. Same thing with DeAndre Jordan should be averaging, you know, 20 and 20, essentially. Um, And if the reports are true, DeAndre Jordan did not take light to the criticism of Chris Paul and his, you know, multiple missed free throws. And that's just really just a chump move. You know, the Clippers locale for DeAndre Jordan moving forward. Um, No one else in the league, maybe on this side of, John Wall, um, you know, not, I wouldn't even go as far as to say Steph and Westbrook and those guys. No one else is going to elevate you statistically wise, DeAndre, the same way Chris Paul would because all the other point guards are looking for their shot first as opposed to Chris Paul who's actually looking to give you buckets. <clears throat> no one else is going to help you elevate your statistics and this was your best statistical season up until this point. You're not known for off you know for being a great offensive player you're known for your defensive production and that's what's going to get you a max contract so i would you know tread lightly when you start coming at chris paul that's just my personality in my opinion um so that does raise a few questions though as far as what the clippers do need to do um by next year in order to be considered contenders out in the west i mean with westbrook and durant coming back of Kobe and Mitch Kupchak expecting to retool the Lakers. Um, you know, I'm sure Anthony Davis and the boys aren't going any well, as well as the Spurs and the Rockets and Steph. All these teams are going to come back to make it a very even tougher Western Conference uh, playoffs next year. So what do the Clippers need to do? There's a couple things they need to do. Um, let's talk about their weakest spot on the floor is probably their shooting guard position right now. Um, you can make the argument that Matt Barnes is the weakest at small forward, but Matt Barnes does play defense. Um, he does bring some tenacity to the floor. He does bring some some rebounding from the small forward position, and he still gives you outside shooting. So, you know, he's going to give you what he's going to give you. Um, J.J. Redick, however, I feel like is a weak link on this offense. Uh, he's a spot-up three-point shooter, and that's all he's giving you. He's not locking anyone down. He's not being a great one-on-one on the ball defender he's really not giving you much of any production outside of that three ball and if that three ball isn't hitting he's no good to you than any other bench guy a jimmer for that honestly so you know i think that the clippers should explore trade options and one trade option that comes to mind off the top of my head is lance stevenson you know it didn't work out for him in charlotte 
you know, he came in with the attitude that I'm going to be the guy, you know, we're going to have this New York backcourt with me and Kemba Walker, et cetera, et cetera. Things didn't go as planned. And I think Charlotte needs to upgrade their shooting overall on the team. You know, Henderson isn't a great shooter. Um, Michael K. Girl Chris isn't a great shooter. Neither is Lance. So I think a straight up trade of Lance for JJ Redick would be great for both teams. The Clippers are going to get a, a tenacious defender at the shooting guard who can still average 17 points in your starting lineup and truly could be a great shooting guard in the West. Um, so I think they really need to try to explore to get Lance over there. You know, somebody who they don't have to take off the floor and lose anything offensively or defensively. Uh, another guy they need to consider. Um, at the small forward position, they need to upgrade that position as well. I think Lowell Day, um, you know, the African small forward who is widely recognized around the league as, you know, a top 10 small forward when healthy as far as rebounding, as far as being able to be a good fundamental basketball player, playing defense, being able to knock shots open. You know, he's not a one-on-one -on -one offensive player, but the Clippers don't need that. So, um... Personally, I'd like to see Doc make a run for, for Dang. Um, it's going to be hard to prime away from Pat Riley in Miami, but it can't be done. Um, I think he will be able to come in and start immediately. You bring Matt Barnes off the bench. I think I think that's great. I think you're elevating your team that way. Um, you know, there's a couple other guys. Before I get into DeAndre, a couple other guys you should think about. Jason Thompson from the Sacramento Kings. Um, rumor has it that the Kings want to pair DeMarcus Cousins with a quote-unquote defensive-minded um, center or a defensive-minded power forward so that DeMarcus is taken off of all the big man duties of the other team's best low-post player. Um, if that's the case, Jason Thompson will be great depth coming off the bench for the Clippers. You're talking about a 16 guy who does bang down low. He can make his free throws. He's efficient around the basket. He's durable. He plays through through injuries. He, I mean, that would be a great pickup for the Clippers, and Dot needs to explore that. Um, possibly, you know, guys they should get rid of. Turkoglu, way past his prime, washed up, taking up a roster spot. You might as well call me. Um, Glenn Big Baby Davis, again, young, you know, he's on the younger side, I believe, of 30, but, you know, what is he really offering you at this point? If he's not able to step out and knock down a three, I mean, you have a toddler running around the paint amongst men. It's just not going to work. Um, you know, moving on, we get to the post players where the Clippers need the most depth, and they were unable to have that this year in the playoffs. Um, in the event that you're not able to retain DeAndre Jordan in free agency, I'd like to throw out two options. Option number one would possibly be Tyson Chandler. Everybody talks about, oh, DeAndre wants to go to Dallas. Tyson would be a great mix for the Clippers. I mean, you're going to pair him back up with Chris Paul, who he had his best statistical seasons with in New Orleans. Um, in addition, he's going to be able to do all the same things DeAndre does, just not at the highest level, especially on the defensive end. You're not getting that same, you know, four to five blocks a game, but he might get you two to three. Okay, he's going to still give you eight to nine rebounds. And he's going to be able to knock down free throws. He doesn't have to get off the floor in closing minutes of the game. Um, if you're unable to get DeAndre, you're unable to get Tyson, try to finagle a deal for Roy Hibbert. Um, you know, Roy's stock has gone down this year tremendously. And that's mostly due to, you know, the Pacers being scarce in talent. They haven't really had anyone to go to, and a lot has been put on his shoulders. He's a role player. He's not suited to carry the team. And in this offense, Roy Hibbert, I think, will flourish. I think he would return to a 14-point, nine-rebound-a-game guy, um, someone who can pass well out of the post as well. Um, he's not going to be a big oop guy. He's not going to feed into the Lob City stuff. But if you want somebody you can throw it to on the block and get you a basket, I think you need to consider bringing Roy Hibbert on board. Okay. Um, moving on. So, you know, I was on 
on Twitter and I said that the Rockets were gonna beat the Clippers and no one believed me when I said that and I'm gonna jump out there again and make another bold prediction that the Rockets will beat the Golden State Warriors in seven games I'm closing them out in Santa Clara California in game seven um, a lot of people will be shocked but I just look at matchups I look at player personnel I look at experience and then I just look at tenacity which often is not measure with numbers and when it comes down to it um, you know Steph is obviously gonna give Jason Terry some problems in this series I don't think he can be guarded by Terry but at the same time I don't think Thompson or Steph can guard James Harden and James is playing with a chip on his shoulder having to be able to play against a guy who stole his MVP trophy um, in addition to that, you have a healthy Dwight. You have Josh Smith now in the starting lineup. So you're getting, um, I think, a better front court than what the Warriors are. And people will argue, oh, well, the Warriors have Draymond Green. Well, Josh Smith is going to be, he's going to give Draymond some, some issues. I'm not saying he can't be guarded, but Draymond will definitely have his hands full um, because Josh isn't going to just settle for three points. He's going to go to the basket, and that could potentially put Green um, in harm's way in terms of foul trouble. Dwight is the key, obviously, in this series because Andrew Boga can't really guard him. And the Warriors will not be able to really feed off of penetration. I think they're going to be settling for a lot of outside jump, jump shots. And you live by the three, you die by the three. And a, and a lot of times we saw last series against Memphis, if they're not shooting well, they, will, they, they can and they will go down. And I think that if the Rockets can can kind of, you know, eliminate some of those perimeter shots and make them come to the basket where you have a, a, a Dwight Howard down there, I think they can really make some noise and really push this to seven games and eventually win. Uh, another thing that people are just overlooking here is that the Rockets are a team full of championship pedigree. Okay, from top to bottom, you got to look at Jet. The Jet won a championship with the Dallas Mavericks. Okay, he knows what it takes to win a championship. Um, James Harden, he's been to the championship, obviously. 2012 with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, he didn't show up that, at that point in his career, but he's back. And he has a chance to redeem himself as a star player. He's been to the chip. He knows what it takes to get there. Small forward. You have Trevor Ariza. Trevor Ariza, um, then he win in Los Angeles with Kobe championship pedigree and he was a key integral part of that team in Los Angeles um you have Terrence Jones you have Josh How or, I'm sorry Josh Smith at, at power forward who haven't been to the to the championship but they're guys that want to prove themselves they're both guys who who have been labeled hey they're not starters they're kind of tweeners just kind of filling in a roster spot on this team so they're going to be playing with an edge on their shoulders. And then you have Dwight Howard, who's carried his team single-handedly, that sorry Orlando Magic team with Jameer Nelson and Turkaloo and a bunch of other bums. He carried them to the championship game in the championship series against Kobe's Lakers, and they just ended up being too much. Um, nonetheless, he knows what it takes to get to the championship. Okay? And you got a number of guys. You got veterans coming off the bench and Pablo and... You know, they have what it takes, and I do believe that they will um, end up beating the Golden State Warriors. You heard it first here. No one gives you this type of coverage. It's D Lills, hiphopandhomeruns.com.